we're going to talk about the contains method to see if a value is inside of an array. All I've done to the lab is I've created an integer uh, x that's zero. I created a new array. I did not want to use a random array. I wanted to use a very specific one that I knew the values on and I just put very simple zero, one, two, three. These are surrounded with curly braces right here. So you declare it the same, you just put uh, the array inside of curly braces. Uh, this line is how I'm going to call the method, um, but of course I want to see the result. So I could go boolean like b equals, uh, and then I can print out here b. Uh, so that'd be one option. Uh, the other option is I can just put the entire contains method right here inside my print statement and then not need that variable at all. So I'm going to print out what the array is with that two string, uh, just so we're extra, extra sure I'm using this array for. And then it's going to say contains the value of x, which for me is zero. Uh, we're going to test all the different values and we're going to test values not in the array. Uh, and then is, and then whatever true or false that returns. Now I can tell it's going to return false because I can look right there at the screen. I reordered it and moved contains up so I wouldn't be scrolling in this video. So I'm going to hit play. You probably guess what uh, you should see. Of course, I just realized it's already on the screen, so it's not that exciting. Uh, so there we go. Contain zero is false. Okay. Obviously, contains is not uh, correct because it should be true. Uh, so let's go inside the contains method now. One thing I'm not going to talk about is uh, if your array is empty, meaning if there's zero elements inside of it, uh, you want to check that and return false. Um, you, depending on the for loop that you write or the while loop that you write, uh, you might be able to handle that inside or just with the loop itself. Like maybe the loop doesn't run or run zero times. Um, and then you have return false at the bottom. So I'm just going to start out, uh, I need an if statement. And I'm going to go array uh, zero. Now this is position zero in the array, not value zero. So my specific array, that should actually be the value zero. Uh, if that is equal to value, I'm going to return true. OK, let's give this a run. Oh, look at that. The array contains zero is true. What I'm going to do now is look for one. You could probably guess what's going to happen when I hit play is it's only going to look at the value in the initial or the zero position and uh, value zero, it's not going to be equal to one. Um, and again, you can see uh, it's highlighting X and it's also highlighting X and x right there. So whenever you put the cursor over any variable, all the instances of that variable are going to be highlighted. And notice it does not highlight value because what's going to happen, even though the value of x in our case 1 is going to be sent down to here, down here this value will equal 1. It won't actually equal x. It'll, it'll equal the number that x contains. Uh, okay, so we're going to run this and false. Okay. So obviously it's incorrect. Uh, so let's do a control shift down to duplicate and run this. So now what I'm doing is I'm checking in the first position if it equals value return true. Oh, there we go. Look at that. It contains one is true. So I checked the zero position and the one position. Now a really bad way to make this work um, and it's only going to work for our specific case here with a length of four. Could do this. I checked every position, assuming my array always has length four, uh, and I can return true. And of course, if I don't see the value, the default is return false. Another thing with these return statements, if any of these statements are true, let's say the first one's true, um, so it will execute the code inside the block. When it returns true, it no longer executes any code below. 
so that return true actually cuts out execution. It won't run anything below that when it returns. So return actually exits the method and it will go back to where it was called. Uh, so that's why I don't need to put an else. You don't need to do this uh, and move false into here because the return is, oops, the return is gonna stop execution and so it won't continue and so it won't end up returning false if any of these actually happen. All right, so I'll run this again. I think we should get true because I didn't really change anything. Now we'll look for the two and the three to be safe. And it contains two is true. Three, three is true. Uh, let's look for a four. Four is false, okay. So this actually works as long as your array has length four. Not every array is gonna have length four. So what you need to do is take these. You really only actually need one if statement, but what you need is the if statement inside of a loop. Let's go ahead and look at a good loop. Here we go. This is how the standard way to loop over an array and you want to take this code and modify it. Obviously, we don't have a max value, um, so ours will just be return true. Uh, and then you want to use array, and you're going to use the index i, which is starting at, oh, you want to be careful here. Uh, this is not the best loop, because we actually need to start at position zero. We kind of sidestep that on max value, because we looked at the initial value separately. So actually looking at that, it's not a big deal. You can just start i at zero. Uh, the two string is probably a good one to look at. Oh, cancel that. Wow. There we go. The sum should work just fine. It starts at zero. Uh, remember, if you go all the way to the length, uh, arrays the initial position in array is zero, and then one, two, three. So if you try to access the fourth position in the array, you'll get index out of bounds exception. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're less than array.length, and then you should be okay. Uh, now it's always fun to have an index out of bounds on purpose, uh, which you can totally do. Uh, and you'll see the red when you run it, the exception code, or exception output will be red here. Okay, but I do hope that this helps you out and you were able to um, at least get started on the contains method. And again, here is that uh, statement where I actually call contains, and you do have to send the array first, and then the integer value second, because the order here has to match the order up here. And if I intentionally mess that up, we may not think it's a big deal, but uh, Java won't understand what's going on, even though we might think, ah, it's the same contains method. It's got an array and a value, so what's the problem? Well, it needs to be, it's called the signature, and the order is very important. So I'll change that back. There we go. Okay, so again, this is very much not complete. Uh, I just did this to give you a taste of how to solve it. Um, and you want to use a for loop and any of the other four loops in here are a good starting place. Uh, okay, good luck. This is probably one of the harder ones.